Suzanne is a funical man, says the song, but none so funical as Susan, young pet star of Andrew Jones of the seaside city of Napier. Every morning they accompany a friend and his Alsatian for a run on the beach. When the others turn out to sea, Susan is too big-headed to stay behind. Since her wild mother was shot by hunters when she was quite a small piglet, no one ever told her pigs were not good at swimming. The poor little orphan pig would have been left on her own to sink or swim had she not been a lucky pig and met Andrew. But he finds her growing into quite a weighty responsibility. Time to put the built-in snorkel to work again. Andrew heads for shore, followed with pig-like devotion by the latest celebrity amongst New Zealand pets, namely Susan, the surf-swimming sow. At the Wellington Zoo, afternoon tea is brought for the three latest arrivals from overseas. From left to right, the names are Molly, two years old, baby Brina, 18 months, and Yoka, aged two and a half. Quite a few hungry people have come to watch the meet. In one respect, Wellington has now caught up to London. It has a daily chimpanzee's tea party. In the southern hemisphere, Yoka finds, a chimp still drains a cup the same way up. Something keeper Kay Cole said has Yoka rolling in the aisles. And baby Brina has a tantrum. She wants to be carried. What's the joke, Yoka? Just that babies made it. A real pramload of monkeys on their way home from a tea party. The new city council house for the immigrants is not quite finished yet. Mind the wet concrete, Molly. But no doubt the builders promised it'll be completely finished by Christmas. Bye, Brina. See you tomorrow, tea time. Two hundred million years ago, Tuataras looked the same as they do now. This old fellow, a full two foot long, was probably a youngster about the time of the Battle of Waterloo. Fossilized specimens have been found in other parts of the world, but today Tuataras exist only on a few islands off the New Zealand coast. They're the sole living representatives of an order so old as to be called living fossils. This little fellow, about four inches long, is 18 months old. The two babies feeding on slugs are the only Tuataras to have been successfully hatched and reared in captivity. From chilling sized eggs buried in soil, they emerged after 16 months. Mr. Roach, curator of the Auckland Zoo, catches four tuataras which the New Zealand government has recently presented to the London, New York, Chicago and San Diego zoos. They're put into specially prepared boxes for their overseas trip. Regarding the reptiles as particularly valuable exhibits, the zoos arranged for Mr. Roach to fly with them and care for them on the journey. Captain R. Bushman of Airclipper Nightingale personally supervises the embarkation of his prehistoric passengers. A strange mode of travel for the world's most ancient creature. Fame has come to this New Zealand pig, barn and burner of Putikoi. She's the mother of the world record litter of 19 piglets. Keeping an eye on 19 babies was a bit too much for Verna. She rolled on two, and then there were 17. Even 17 are quite a stifle. When it's feeding time, you can't move for the litter, so it's first come, first serve. And some pigs are just to make people of themselves. With feeding facilities for only 14, there are always two sittings for supper. Uh-oh, uh -oh, in the second sitting. In an exclusive interview, Werner said... Thank you, Werner. And now it's time to give the children the air. <laughs> Barn and Werner is a more food campaign all on her own. Yes, Werner certainly brought home the bacon. It's not bad for a ham. She couldn't have been any rasher. It was cat naps only for pedigree pussies and owners on the first morning of the Auckland Championship show. This pedigree Siamese waited patiently till his mistress was groomed and ready to give him some of the care and attention which was lavished on fine bred animals coming from as far as Wellington for the big event.
At the Auckland Town Hall, fond owners queue up outside the veterinary surgeon's tent. All cats are examined carefully to see if they're healthy before going to their cages. An outbreak of ringworm would be a catastrophe. There were big cats, little cats, he cats and she cats. Cats from Abyssinia and cats from Siam. White cats, black cats, grey cats and tabby cats. And other cats the colour of marmalade jam. From the catwalk, exhibitors watched anxiously as the judge, Miss Kathleen York of England, examined each entrant. Colour of fur and eyes, shape of head, length of legs and tail, numerous fine points which helped Puss get her name in the feline catalogue. Miss York considered the standard was good, in fact something to write home about. When the judging was over, the public was admitted to the hall, care being taken to exclude all cat burglars. Exhibitors, public and cats alike were interested in the results, and careful attention was paid to the cards which denoted the prize winners in the various categories. Her daddy wouldn't buy her a bow wow, but he surely wouldn't say no to a fascinating little bundle like this. My hat, cat burglars did get in. Mother and family meet mother and family, straight from the cat's cradle. Scratching is catching, isn't it? Junior, are you all right? Yes, Junior was the cat's pajamas. Most cats seem to enjoy the show. But others took another catnap till the opening of the cat's bar. Near Tarkaka in New Zealand's South Island, it's feeding time for Miss McCallum's strange pets, her tame eels. To bring them from the holes along the riverbank, she flicks her fingers on the surface of the water. When they hear that dinner gong, about 20 eels come from as far as 30 yards downstream. Touching, isn't it? Their natural food is small fish, but these eels are fed on household scraps. Today, it's raw meat with a junket dessert. They've learnt a lot of things, but table manners isn't one of them. Miss McCallum's been taming eels since she was a child and knows all her pets by sight. She's been feeding some of them for over 20 years and they're her oldest friends. She's not alone in her unusual hobby. In a creek in Taranaki in the North Island, eels, trout and ducks, all natural enemies, live peaceably together. Mr. Porter, who's tamed them, has names for all his pets, and with Pinocchio the trout he can do anything, well, almost anything. The fish are fed on scraps from a nearby dairy factory, and at feeding times their manners aren't too good either. Mr. Porter was originally interested only in the trout, and to protect them, he used to kill any eels he saw, until he discovered that as long as they weren't hungry, they wouldn't harm the trout. So now he just feeds them all. Out of the way, you. Mr. Porter has his eels literally eating out of his hand, but still he thinks they're very funny fishers, eels. When 300 pet dogs met at the tail waggers convention recently, there was some heated discussion on uh, family benefits, lamp posts, and the uh, application of shaggy dog stories to other members of the animal kingdom. The delegates wouldn't let us film actual discussions, but allowed us to take these shots between debates. Next, please. Preparations of their speeches put a strain on delegates that showed alarming results at mealtimes. And in frequent scenes like these. Some gate crashes were found in this carton. In fact, the social committee had some trouble with miners trying to smuggle themselves in to hear things not fit for young ears. The chairman was uh, a bit upset about it all. Said Spot, another worker, these bibs bore us. It's all very well for you, for you to be looking at me, but have you ever thought what it's like from our point of view, looking out? I don't like dog shows, the things they do to you. And the judging, how would you like to have somebody swaying around you like this?
Think of how the dog show looks to my young nephew, George. He's a nice enough lad, a bit of a wolf. But think what he sees. Even a sheepdog couldn't keep his mind on his work. I just couldn't tell you what we pet dogs think about dog shows. 